Hello YouTube, it's Shadow Hero 90 welcoming you to the fifth season of Sexism in Movies and TV. Now, there are many reasons as to why I do this review show. One of which is the portrayal of men in the media is downright horrific. It's an insult. It's why most kids think their dads are idiots. But when it comes to women, they get the get out of horrible portrayal free card. And although I do review a lot of shows and movies that are aimed at a mature adult audience, most of what I review is aimed at a young audience. And yes, I kind of do blame shows like Adventure Time and Loud House and the bulk of what, uh, what usually appears on this show as being the reason that teenage boys have such low self-esteem. Which is actually kind of true when you think about it from a psychological perspective. If when every single portrayal, well almost every single portrayal of men and boys on TV and in movies is negative of course they're going to, of course, these teenage boys, when they first hit puberty, are going to have horrible self-esteem. So, in that regard, I kinda do, well, I, not kind of, I know that I have a noble cause when I rip apart these televised pieces of shit. So anyways, on with the review. Okay, in this episode of Sexism in Movies and TV, I'm going to be reviewing the Loud House episode, Kings of the Khan, which actually has a ton of unfortunate implications, but I will get to that at the end of the review. Okay, so this episode starts with Clyde running to Lincoln's house as fast as he can. In fact, Clyde ran so hard that by the time he found Lincoln, he had to breathe in and out of a paper bag, I guess to keep himself from throwing up or hype and or hyperventilating. I don't really know. I don't know what this kid's physical ailments are. So anyways, Clyde then tells Lincoln the reason he was in such a hurry to see him. He tells him about the latest Ace Savvy convention and the fact that the first prize for fans dressed as Ace Savvy and One-Eyed Jack would be the would be named Kings of the Con and would get a role in the upcoming Ace Savvy movie. 
Lincoln gets excited. We cut to a fantasy scene of them as a savvy and one-eyed Jack in the filming of the A Savvy movie. In all fairness, it just seems like these were the they were born to play these roles. This gets Lincoln so excited that he has to start breathing in the paper bag now. Lincoln and Clyde at first are sure that they could win this, and the comic book that they made from the episode Pulp Fiction essentially gives them an idea on how they might have an advantage over everyone else, and that would be getting Lincoln's sisters to dress up as the full deck from that episode. But, unsurprisingly, Lincoln's sisters do not want to have anything to do with it. Until Lincoln mentions what the prize is. And yes, I know that Lincoln and Clyde kind of leave out the part where they're just looking for a savvy and one-eyed Jack and not the full deck and probably not even that. If anything, Lincoln and Clyde would probably only get a cameo. I don't really remember the episode that well. But they leave that out to convince Lincoln's jackass sisters to help them. And I'm pretty sure that this episode is going for a... You should not lie, moral. But, here's the thing. That's what they did in the episode, No Such Luck. And apparently the writing staff on this show learned absolutely nothing from that steaming pile of shit. Because... This episode is essentially a less abrasive version of No Such Luck. If anything, Kings of the Khan is more or less No Such Luck light. Okay, so knowing that dressing Lincoln's buffoon sisters up would not be enough, Lincoln and Clyde actually try to essentially give them a crash course in a Savvy's lore. But lo and behold, the jackasses weren't even paying attention. Believe me, this is the only part of this cartoon that's realistic. Take it from someone with experience. I actually tried to get my sister into anime. Believe me, it did not. And she is kind of like Lola and some of Lincoln's other sisters. So yeah, she was not... So anyways, they arrive at the convention center. We, as the audience, find out about the kitty, who is apparently a Savvy's arch nemesis. And yes, that will come up later. So, anyways, Lincoln 
and Clyde tried to impress the judges. And here's where the episode really starts to go bad by essentially painting Lincoln as a loser. Lincoln's sisters were brought in to dress up like the full deck solely to make Lincoln and Clyde seem more appealing to the judges and give them more of a chance at winning that spot in the upcoming A Savvy movie. But Lincoln's sisters actually end up making Lincoln and Clyde look bad. By showing them up at every single opportunity. Attempt number one, Lisa makes Lincoln and Clyde look dumb by beating them at the contest corner. Attempt two is more or less Lincoln's fault by offering to autograph a copy of the comic where the full deck made their first appearance. And the ink splattered all over the judges. And in attempt number three, Lynn makes them look weak in comparison in a typical test your strength game and she's somehow able to cartoonishly send the bell through the roof. I know that this is a cartoon but suspension of disbelief is all. Lynn is only 13 and I'm pretty sure she hasn't been taking steroids. But this is all to drive the plot and hammer in the fact that Lincoln and Clyde are spineless wimps. Then Lincoln's jackass sisters take the wallet of money that Lincoln had on him for either no reason or a stupid reason that I can't remember because I was kind of pissed off at this episode. So anyways, after <clears throat> the jackasses had left, Lincoln and Clyde try to impress the judges by dunking the card shark in a typical dunking booth type game. But apparently, neither one of them can aim for some stupid reason. Which, in most shows, leads to seeing the place get flooded. But nope, all these losers are capable of is getting the floor whacked. Then, as their second attempt to impress the judges without Lincoln's jackass sisters around, they tried displaying their knowledge of the high roller, which I can only assume is the Ace Savvy equivalent to the Batmobile. And this, even though it is a cartoon, this is the point that struck... that basically blows through my suspension of disbelief. These two boys have been reading Ace Savvy since they were seven. They should know everything about his equivalent to the Batmobile. Yet, they almost send it on a rampage. That is, if they could have actually gotten it off the ground. 
Okay, after the incident with the high roller went awry, Lincoln and Clyde are talking about how they could possibly impress the judges. And this is where they get the idea to kidnap the cat who essentially is playing the kitty, a Savvy's arch nemesis. And I have many problems with this. One being that Lincoln and Clyde are huge Ace Savvy fans. And something like this is something that Ace Savvy would never do. Because it's kidnapping. And yes, I'm aware that as a cat, the kitty is not a person. Then I'm pretty sure you could call it stealing. Either way, it's still a crime. There were three references to DC Comics in this episode. And given that... Ace Savvy and One-Eyed Jack are clearly based off of Batman and Robin. You'd kind of think that that's how Lincoln and Clyde would want to act. You would think that they would follow that example. But no, they're not like Batman and Robin in this episode. They're like Magneto or Timbuktu from the Ben 10 remake. Essentially causing a problem only to swoop in and essentially solve the problem they themselves created. And that's kind of something I would like to touch on. But I, but I will go into that after I'm done with this review. Okay, so after two failed attempts, Lincoln and Clyde managed to capture the kitty and actually think that their evil plan and leave him in a broom closet convinced that their evil plan had succeeded. Someone found out that the kitty was missing and had someone over the loudspeakers tell everyone in the convention hall, which leads Lincoln and Clyde to think that their foolproof plan to essentially be fake heroes and stop the kitty was in effect and about to work. Lincoln and Clyde go to the broom closet where they left the kitty, only to find that the kitty has escaped, and that if they want their shot at being in the Ace Savvy movie, they're going to have to bring him back. or more or less hunt him down, and then drag him back. So anyways, rule of three, and by the time we're at the third gag, at how pathetic Lincoln and Clyde are in this situation, Lincoln beats down a rope thinking it was the kitty. 
and then the kitty attacks them. And this could easily be seen as a nitpick, but it is not. Lincoln and Clyde are actually bleeding. From what I understand, that this is usually something that Nickelodeon would not allow. But I guess um, standards and practices will only let you do this to boy characters, not say to a character who's done tons of things in the past who deserve it, like, oh, say, Lola Loud. So anyways, the kitty pins Lincoln and Clyde to the wall, and Lincoln essentially shows what a cuck he is when he calls his sisters for help. But here's the thing. The way Lincoln tells Clyde to contact his sisters is fucking stupid. It makes no sense. And it literally goes against stuff we saw earlier. Yes, Lenny does notice that the bat signal reference is in the background of a photo taken of them while the Loud Sisters were having a great time ha because of all the attention they were getting and all the people who wanted to have their pictures taken with them. But here's why this doesn't work. Lincoln's jackass sisters weren't even paying attention to the Ace Savvy slideshow and it was Lenny who saw the ace signal and recognized it. This makes no sense, because past episodes have actually stated that Lenny is has the brain of a mouse. Her brain is that small, yet in this episode, she apparently was able to figure out what something means even though she has no clue what it was because she wasn't paying attention when it was being shown to her. To add insult to injury, the Loud Girls then essentially break continuity even further by getting there in the high roller which, again, they weren't paying attention and therefore should have no idea how this car works. I mean, when Lincoln tried to use it, he was triggering lights and having it bounce around. I know that both Lori and Lenny can drive, but in all fairness, they should have done something that sent this thing crashing into a wall. Which would actually, if that were the ending, this would be an excellent finale. Lincoln and Clyde are about to get their faces raked off, but then the Donkey Sisters show up to bail them out. Lori tears Lincoln and Clyde down, just to hammer in what a loser Lincoln is, his sisters essentially beat the kitty down somewhat. 
The kitty then reveals he's got one final trick up his sleeve, a smoke bomb, and then appears behind Lincoln and Clyde ready to rake their eyes out. When they get saved by Lily of all people. Lincoln and Clyde do get the kitty back into his pen, or whatever you'd call this box. Turns out the whole convention saw it. Lincoln and Clyde had finally impressed the judges. They walk up onto the stage where the judges declare them the winners, address them as heroes, and give them, essentially award them their prize, the slot in the Ace Savvy movie. So anyways, the Jackass sisters get sad and depressed when they find out that Lincoln had lied to them. But after everything he's done for them in the past, it wouldn't kill them to help him. In fact, there was an episode about that concept called Cover Girl. And, um, now after addressing that, because, you know, Lincoln lied to his sisters to get success, I kind of want to take the, I'm going to stop the review temporarily and bring up some of the stuff they did to him because, you know, they kind of deserve this. Essentially trying to scare and traumatize him in the episode, The Sound of Silence. For simply wanting to read a comic book in peace, which he could not do because his deranged sisters were making so much noise. And then it kind of, I, I'm forced to remember that there was an episode where Lori wanted the same thing and essentially got it and was not punished by her siblings in any way. The episode Sound of Silence wanted to have the message you can't ignore your family, but hypocritically his Lincoln sisters ignore him all the time. In fact, they ignored him in this episode. Lori didn't really have a problem ignoring Lincoln's pain in the episode Save the Date when she forced him to date his bully just so she could get her relationship with Bobby back. One that was actually, well, instantly sunk when the Casa Grandes happened and Ronnie Ann was essentially moved out of Royal Woods to be in a spin-off. Bobby went with her. And since Bobby has the overall mind of a three-year-old and working at the Macaba is his dream, this is not a relationship that will last. If it ever came down to it, their relationship would crumble. Bobby would dump Lori, and Lori would deserve it. Every single thing they did to him during the episode No Such Luck. And in the episode Brawl in the Family, 
They essentially kick Lincoln out of his own bedroom several times, don't let him watch TV, ban him from the kitchen, and essentially, and worst of all, won't let him use the bathroom and make him go in a bucket. And believe me, the whole being banned from the bathroom thing, I say it's the worst because I have personal experience with that one. Lenny is 16, Lori is 17. They're acting like goddamn children over, some, over a problem that is nothing. The problem is non-existent, but they have to make their brother's life a living hell because of it. Yeah, they do deserve this. After everything that I just listed, and after all the times he's been willing to help them or sacrifice something for them, the least they could do is essentially help Lincoln and Clyde get that part in the A Savvy movie. Lincoln had to lie just to get them to go along. Unlike the morons who wrote this episode, I do not see this as a dick move. I see this as these ten bitches having gotten something they deserved. But then, and just because the show couldn't have Lincoln lie to his sisters and win in the end. And then Lincoln and Clyde feel bad for what they did. Because, and then Lincoln and Clyde feel bad about what they did because the jackasses who wrote this episode really did not learn their episode. And then Lincoln and Clyde feel bad for what they did because the morons who wrote this episode didn't want Lincoln to get away with tricking his sisters, despite how terrible most of them are, and if something like this worked in Brawl in the Family, which it didn't, it'll work here, which it doesn't. So anyways, Lincoln then essentially comes clean and Lincoln essentially gives the prize that he and Clyde stole to his jackass sisters. And then this load of crap pretty much ends with Lincoln and Clyde finding out they did get a part in the movie just not in the movie, but as the kitty's assistants off screen. And this only happened so the kitty would have an excuse to maul them. So, anyways, Lincoln then essentially comes clean. And Lincoln essentially gives the prize that he and Clyde stole to his jackass sisters. And then this load of crap pretty much ends with Lincoln and Clyde finding out they did get a part in the movie, just not in the movie, but as the kitty's assistants off screen and this only happened so the kitty would have an excuse to maul them. Okay, before we end this review, I want to bring up something that I said around 
12 minutes in. And that's that you'd think since Lincoln and Clyde look up to Ace Savvy and One-Eyed Jack as role models, they'd want to act like them, or would at least follow the example they set. There's this horrific media perception that all fans are essentially nerds, and that all fans are essentially nerds, when that couldn't be further from the truth. A nerd is someone who actually likes school and would believe the educational system actually works when it doesn't. Yes, it's true that nerds like school, and it is possible to, like, say, both school and comic books, or school and sports, or school and video games. But if things like video games comic books, anime, cartoons were meant to appeal to just nerds and not the entire fandom as a whole. It would, well, any of these mediums would essentially look the way they would if, parod if parodied by AOK's scientifically accurate series that is on YouTube. Yes, it is possible for someone to be both a nerd and a fan, but it's also possible for someone to be a jock and a fan, as well as both a punk and a fan or a hero and a fan. Just because you either like or either hate school, doesn't, that doesn't dictate what you're allowed to like when you're not in school or when you're at work. And it's not exclusive to men. In fact, in this episode, we actually see a woman wanting to get a photo of the jackasses here, and she doesn't look like some nerd girl at all. In fact, she looks pretty attractive. Point being, Girls can like this stuff, too. It really doesn't matter. Uh, another half to my point is that superheroes... And it is an example that everything on the show would lead me to believe Lincoln and Clyde would follow. But they don't do that in this episode. They act like nerds in this episode. And believe me when I say, the example that superheroes set of an actual superhero, whether in real life or in fiction, would know that when dealing with a bully, you have to stand up to him. You actually have to fight him. You actually have to punch him in the face. Beat him down. Even if you fail to win the fight, you would have essentially followed the example that superheroes set. 
superheroes set the example that things, in this case morality, are not black and white. Nerds kind of view things as black and white. You see, by definition, nerds view the education. Not only are schools beginning, well, they've been overstepping their boundaries for a very long time at this point, but not only have they, are they o overstepping their boundaries, but they're letting a bunch of assholes, usually in high school, get away with stuff that their students to say whatever they want without consequences. A local asshole on my, on, well, when I was in high school, a local and then there's the fact that they will hire anyone. I remember once I had this science teacher who actually did not care about science. He only became a teacher just so he could have a captive audience to spout his idiotic political views. If you, uh, yeah, and after everything I said, I'm just going to say it. And that was Kings of the Con. It was hypocritical, almost destroyed Lincoln and Clyde as characters, made Lincoln's jackass sisters really unlikable, and was overall a piece of fucking dog shit. And that is it. The review is over. I am leaving. I'm leaving the review. It is over as of now.